Hello, this is Raziel Cohen with NDFTraining.com, and today we're going to be looking at a set of gun skins from EP Tactics. So what are gun skins? This is something that's actually very interesting to me because it's kind of like a very affordable way to be able to see what your gun would look like if it had a full Cerakote without needing to actually use that kind of price tag. Um, also, obviously, depending on the system that you have, Cerakote might not be the option you want to be able to go with. But what this is, is kind of like a vinyl wrap for your gun. They're able to choose from a very large variety of different styles to kind of customize your specific gun. So. The kind of question might end up being, why would you need it? First answer would be that it just looks good. So if you want to have a different kind of custom gun without putting a huge, huge amount of uh, money into it, you can get a very simple system like this to be able to customize your gun. So that's something interesting. Something that I find more interesting is the reason why this gun was set up that way. Now, this doesn't belong to me. This belongs to a friend of mine, and he lets me uh, use it very often for videos and things like that. This originally was a Polymer 80 frame. Now, he ended up uh, putting together the Polymer 80, and he ended up getting this system specifically serialized. Now, he only wanted to do it because he doesn't live in a state that it's super legal to be able to go through the whole process in that state. However, in the state that he manufactured this, it was 100% legal, and then to be able to actually take it home, he had it properly serialized and put together so he could legally own it in the state that he lives in. So the reason why he got this, this covered is because Polymer 80s are kind of iconic for the look that they have. And because of that, it, it could cause a lot of questions that would come up at a range where if someone who's not familiar with the legalities and they don't know um, why it might be legal, this gun is 100% legal in the state that he lives in, but for a lot of people who might not know the law and know that you're able to get this serialized, it just caused too many issues that he wasn't interested in being able to deal with or getting arrested on something that he might be able to resolve later, but it's just, it's just not worth it. So what he did was getting it coded just so it makes it look like not necessarily a Polymer 80 with the iconic look, but just like as a pistol, so it definitely reduced the amount of issues he had with it. So him, him being able to put this together made it much more um, easy to be able to deal with. It makes it... Um, less questionable, and that just makes the whole system a lot easier for him to be able to work with. So that's the reason why he got this specific one coded, and I feel like for a lot of people, that might be something worth being able to look into, where it just doesn't give it that specific, like, oh, that's a Polymer 80 kind of look. So the next question is, what's the install like? I'm not gonna show a full detailed uh, overview of how I installed it, uh, because it was most definitely a process, and there are a lot of people on YouTube who've made much better videos than I have going into much more detail on how this is actually installed. But the question would be, how difficult is it actually to install, and is it realistic for you to be able to do? Now, looking through the videos, I've watched the videos multiple times before going through this process. The first thing I'll tell you is you must take your time. This is a very, very long and tedious process that it is very possible you might not get the first time around. Um, the material that they're using is very forgiving, so even if you do make a mess up like I did all over the place, um, it is able to be resolved. Now, again, I messed up a lot on this because even though I went through the instructional video multiple times, there were a few details that I didn't listen to or I probably should have taken notes on that I did not follow, which ultimately messed up some of the, the aspects of it. Now, from where you're looking or from where the average person's distance-wise is going to be looking, you're not going to notice it. But for me, since I'm the one who actually did it, I see those errors and it bothers me. Um, again, it's something that's easily to be able to be removed. So if you installed it and like after you're like, okay, this was a total disaster, peeling it off is not going to leave any residue um, and it, it works out fine. So like in that regard, you shouldn't worry of it being a permanent um, change to the gun. It is easily removable and it is very forgiving to be able to install. So let's go through some of the stuff that you needed to be able to actually put this onto the gun. Now, what I spoke to the guys at EP Tactics, um, they're the ones who sent this out to me. I told them that I wanted to kind of do like the most average Joe kind of guy, what, what I would have in my house already so that... If someone like you wants to do it and I don't like you don't want any fancy tools, you don't want anything done, how good is it going to be able to come out? So they do recommend using a heat gun or a blowtorch. I didn't want to be able to use either of those because I wanted to, first of all, I don't own them, but and I didn't want to buy them. But I was thinking like if the average person has this in their home, how much how difficult is it as an investment to be able to get into doing something like this? So instead of using a heat gun or instead of using a blowtorch, I use just a basic hair dryer, which does come up to temperature that would be needed to be able to mold this to the gun. Um, but it's definitely much easier to use a blowtorch or a heat gun because it does it faster, um, which makes the process just take a little bit um, less time. Um, so 
If you have a heat gun, if you have a blowtorch, it's much more recommended than using a hairdryer, but a hairdryer is what I use because again, I want it to be as basic as possible. The only thing I bought that I think is extremely necessary um, to be able to get is an X-Acto knife. This X-Acto knife will really be able to help you get around the edges and all the nooks and crannies that you want to be able to cut. Um, so like the slider release, the magazine well, um, the it's called the magazine release button, um, anything that would be smaller fine tuned parts, it's very valuable to have a very, very, very sharp knife. Most of your EDC knives are not going to be sharp enough. I happen to sharpen my spider code to a very, very fine point. So it's not the um, the angle that comes from the factory. So it did work okay. However, I still very highly recommend that you get an X-Acto knife because that's gonna be very helpful for the edges that you're going to be using. So the X-Acto knife is the only thing I purchased outside of the kit itself. After that, what's really recommended is they use a squeegee to really get into the nooks and crannies as well. So I have some front slide serrations that I wasn't able to get fully down because what I ended up using was a foam block from one of my kids' um, toy set. So he just had a foam block that he was able to use. So I thought that might be something that may you guys may have around or just much more easily available to be able to get. Even though squeegees are very available and they're very affordable on Amazon, I wanted to find something that was around my house to just show that it's able to work. It did work not as well as I wanted it to. So I definitely recommend you also get a squeegee so you can really get into the front slide serrations, the rear slide serrations, and any area, other area that it would work for. So again, I didn't use it. It was a mistake on my part and I think you, you definitely should get one. Um, besides for that, you could also use a piece of foam. Um, so like kind of the squishy foam that you might get in your gun boxes and things like that. That was helpful to be able to kind of push this um, like this vinyl into um, into the nooks and crannies as well. So one of the things I showed people is that when I held this up to them, you could kind of see bumps on the grip itself. That was from the original stippling or the original text uh, text work uh, from the Polymer 80. So it might look like it's a problem, but that's actually the original um, design that was on the gun. But using that sponge really be able to get it really tight and work much better than just kind of sticking it with your hands. So that's something that you might want to use as well. So. The question that also might come up is does it change the grip of the gun? Meaning how does it feel? Is it slippery? Is it is it well textured? What, what does it do with the actual grip? In my personal experience and with this one that I have in front of me, this one made it more slippery. So now in the context of this specific gun, the only reason why on this gun it was done was because again, it, it takes away the look of the iconic Polymer 80. So, at this point, I could add talon grips or anything else that I want because the main kind of look of the gun is, is kind of gone now. But uh, for someone who wants to just use this, it might be worth adding something to it or really, really making sure you get into all the nooks and crannies to be able to get the grip pr properly. Because for right now, for me, uh, I feel like it is a little bit slippery, which might in turn affect my grip, especially if the gun ends up getting wet or bloody or sweaty or anything else like that. So that might be something you want to be able to take into account when you wrap this onto your gun. Overall, I am very happy with it because it does look very cool. Um, I would want to be able to redo it for myself because again, now that I've gone through it at least once, I know the issues that I've messed up on and how important they were. So if you're going to get one, I very highly encourage you, you rewatch the video multiple time on the install. It is a very well put together video. It is very detailed, but so, some minor things that you might have missed could really affect the outlook of, of the, the overall look of the gun post post install. So um, definitely be able to do that properly. Another thing that I did specifically is that I haven't seen anyone do it on a polymer 80 frame as well as also with an optic. So the only thing I would say is that if you have an optic on the gun, I would remove the optic and remove any mounting plate that you might have associated with it. And first uh, install the vinyl, cut into the area where the plate is going to be placed. And then you could put it, put it on afterwards. So, um, that, that's pretty much the only detail that I would say on top of that. It doesn't make the install any more difficult. I would just say remove, remove that spot where the optic is. Um, double check your zero after you reinstall it. That might be something worth mentioning. And then everything else should really be able to go according to plan and there's no other details there. So this is kind of an overview. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to let me know. And I'll make sure to get back to you on that. I also do have hopefully soon an uh, AR-15 version of this vinyl that's coming back to my house. So I can install it on one of my ARs and see how difficult or how different the process is in comparison to a pistol. To my understanding, the pistol is a little bit more tedious than the rifle. I could be wrong, um, but the rifle has pre-made cutouts that make it a little bit more simple to my understanding that it should be a little bit smoother of the process. So hopefully I'll be able to bring that to you guys soon so you guys can check that out. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. This is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com. Thank you for watching.